Hey, what's up everybody? In this video here, we're gonna be taking a look at the next set of testing involving this electro winding machine. And in this process, we are going to remove metals from spent electrolyte solution for copper plating and similar materials. And we are going to extract all of the metals out of the e-waste anode electroplating process that we did. And what we are looking at here is a cathode that was ran for about 60 some hours. And in addition to that, we were running at such a high energy density that we were producing a lot of powdered metal and we were able to capture it here in the hydrocyclone. What I have here is two graduated cylinders that was periodically tapped from this chamber here underneath the hydrocyclone. And you can see here in the beginning, we start off with a bright copper material. There's some other debris in there from the old uh, testing. And as we get right here, you can see there's a color change. Might not show up so well in the camera. Then on top of that, we get an even darker layer, which is almost completely black, with some gray stuff on top of it. This gray stuff is material that began to fall out of the solution at the end of the testing. This could either be tin or nickel. The black stuff down there mixed with the tin is a very iron-rich copper material. So there are a lot of metals that was pulled out of this e-waste. And my idea was, is to separate these metals to a higher concentrations by stratification. By simply having the electrical winding assembly connected to a chamber similar to this where we could view the respective stratification layers. And in a process similar to that of mass chromatography, we would tap the respective metals in different beakers, each containing a different concentration of its respective portion of the electrolyte. I lifted up that discharge nozzle so we could get a look at how much gas production there was. Really not a whole lot. You can see the difference in that jet stream and that one. That's from the micro bubbles in the gas. Yes. You can see the release is quite controlled. Okay, that put me just below that fill line or that hump. Right, fellas, we're 15 hours in. I came in last I came in from last night and this thing was completely filled up to the top. Completely filled. So I had to drain it just a little bit. All that good looking powdered material so we're just going to keep letting it run until this stuff is completely cleared up it's I am just really surprised with how well it's uh, pulling the material out very good very good downpour of material this thing is just cranking out metal like a machine <clears throat> see any metal coming out of that I don't I just see oxygen and hydrogen and maybe a little arsine gas We may be producing metal at this rate in real time. There are some different colored particles in here. All right, fellas, so we're 17 hours in. So in two hours, we went from here all the way up here and made a column of metal that large.
so we still seem to be producing a pretty good amount of metal. Okay, fellas, we currently have four gallons of solution in the tank there. So liter-wise, we're... And the last time stamp, we're like 19 hours. The last time stamp, I drained this thing back down to this level. You can still see we've got, it's got a very weird pattern to it now. It wasn't piling up like that before. We have much smaller particles now, as you can see. They're a lot smaller. All right, fellas, we're 25 hours in. You can definitely see there's a difference in the material that's coming out of the machine. Now, look at the stark difference in color. This is probably a lot of the iron and all the other stuff. Weird. That's the copper rich. And then we move on up to this iron. We're 41 hours in. Pretty extensive run. And I'm not sure what this stuff is now. There's a completely different material now coming out of solution, it looks like. See the grayer stuff? Not the black stuff. Okay, we are now producing some kind of gray material that is reluctant to fall out of the stream. You see that? Are falling out of the stream here. So is it possible that we're creating nickel faster than it can be dissolved? Because there is a, a certain amount of time required for sulfuric acid to dissolve nickel. So here is a graduated cylinder. You can see it's got different levels of material in there. And at the top we started getting this gray stuff. I'm going to go ahead and take another sample. I'm going to dump this water out and fill this beaker up almost all the way so we can see what this gray material is all about. We might not get any of it in the beaker. I might be out of room. Definitely yielded some strange material. Look at that. What do you think that is? I knew this would happen. I knew we would get a stratification of different materials as time passed. This is the cleaner copper. I don't know if you can see the color change as good as I can in person. Right here is a darker color. This is gray. That's kind of black. And then we get this uh, this gray stuff, which I'm hoping is nickel powder that has not had time to dissolve back into solution. You can see how black that material is. Then we got another phase change right there. You see how we're now a brighter copper on down to the bottom. You can see what our electrolyte looks like. Now for the purpose of contrast, we have this beaker here, which also has a strata taking place. I don't know what that white stuff is yet, that may be contamination from a heating element and in previous testing. Here is 48 hours in. I have not given this gray stuff time to settle yet. I just wanted to show it, show it to you in suspension. That'd be so cool if this was nickel. I mean, technically it could be. Now we're not gonna get pristine nickel crystal out of this, but 
if we could get nickel powder, we could melt it back down and refine it in a much easier way than what we initially had discussed. There's a look at that stuff kind of really interested to see what that cathode looks like. But I just don't want to stop it. We, we need to know what happens when this process runs its course. All right, so at this point in the game, my instincts are telling me to turn the heating system completely off. The solubility of anything increases when the solvent is hot. So a hot acid, probably gonna dissolve a lot more nickel than cold acid, at least per function time anyway. So I've just turned off the heating system. The temperature was only set to 90, but the cell itself was bringing the temperature up to 97 degrees. So we are still producing that fine powder. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. A little bit of black stuff with it. Every time I shake the unit, that happens. You can see that gray stuff building up on top of the copper that's stuck on the ledge there. So we are only producing a gray powder for the most part. Except for when I bump the machine and knock additional material off the cathode inside of there. Okay, here we go. Looks like we might have been getting some material touching the anode even. Wow, there is some gunk in there, buddy. Let me get a light for you. Wow. I'm going to go ahead and dismantle this thing all the way and we will get a look at what's really going on here. That appears to be some soft copper. Probably some lead, all kinds of stuff in this. Very globular, no crystals. That's a great sign. That's a great sign that we're not seeing a bunch of crystals. Trust me. I have found that crystal formation takes place when your anode is larger than the cathode. Okay, so here's another look at what we got. Very coppery. Yeah, that's where I accidentally rubbed the anode. I'm gonna let this dry before I handle it. Man, did that thing get thick. You can see the deposit is quite thick. There's the edge. That's every bit of a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch thick. Its thickness is not uniform. You can see right here, we're a little bit thicker than this side. So, what is the lead compound? Is it lead sulfide that's made in batteries? Maybe that's what that black stuff is. We're going to retry the entire experiment with a graphite anode next, but I just wanted to see how this went down. We have pretty much stopped producing black powder and now are producing a gray powder. Okay, I don't know if you guys see that or not. But we are starting to see that either nickel or tin deposit dude that's actual metal can't get a good focus on it we'll have to take a closer look at some of that stuff is 
that not look like metal to you? I'll be honest, it really doesn't, but it started to, it looks like glass more than anything, doesn't it? So this is the bottom of the rig that this is happening first. So, we're gonna pull this out. Okay, I used a copper starter sheet because I don't have a stainless steel starter sheet. And that kind of bonded the copper to the stainless steel a little bit. So, not an ideal scenario. It should just slide right out. But I kind of messed that up. I'm not gonna weigh this. It smells terrible. So we're definitely getting some kind of gray activity was going on there. Let me get a better look at that. Okay, Naji and Basil, our next step is to run this same solution, but this time we're gonna use the graphite anode. And the reason we're doing that is to determine if the lead anode has anything to do with the production of this gray powder, this beautiful gray powder. I am very excited about this. This is what uh, my intuition was saying would happen. We would see a stratification that could then be separated in a process similar to mass chromatography. Just the way they tap it, not necessarily Similar I said so don't beat me up too much in the comments on that I, I know what mass chromatography is, but I'm talking about when they tap the solution They'll have several test tubes and each test tube would have a higher concentration of a particular material Based on its rate of mass transfer through the mass transfer media But this is the lead anode. We're gonna take that bad boy out of there and we're gonna swap up and if we still start producing this gray powder, we know it has nothing to do with the lead anode. I'm worried about this ablating and just powdering away and just filling this full of black powder. But uh, that's the name of the game. We're going to do it anyway. We got to see. And uh, I'm very fascinated about this. So that's what's coming up next, guys. I'm going to run this thing till the wheels fall off. Till something just goes so wrong, I gotta stop it. I have to see the process through. I have to know what happens from point A to point B. So we're just going for full on disaster here. That's why I let that cathode just go. Now we can make a more of a powder than what we even had there by changing the size of this anode. If we made it even smaller, we would get even more of a powder effect. 